Josh Cannon, he likes to make videos and occasionally review shit. Greetings, everybody. My name is Josh, and I like to make videos and occasionally review shit. Tonight marks my very first ever video game review, so if you're watching this, you are on the ground floor, man. The hipsters don't even know about this video yet, so if you're watching this, you are literally one of ten. You are very, very special. Thank you. I love you. Um, the game I'm going to be reviewing tonight is one that I loved from my childhood. Of course, I'm talking about Mohawk and Headphone Jack. Just kidding, that game sucks ass. The game I'm really talking about is Mega Man X2. Capcom released Mega Man X2 in North America in 1995. It is a direct sequel to Mega Man X. And the story probably has something to do with Reploids and Mavericks not getting along, blah blah blah. I don't know if you're like me, but I always hit start through these intro screens. I never really cared about the story. Especially at the very beginning when I just wanted to play the damn game. This game starts out like all the other Mega Man X games, with an intro stage. Instantly I'm in the action, I'm dashing, I'm blowing things up, it feels so good. And since I've already played the first Mega Man game, I'm already fully aware of the dynamics and subtleties of the gameplay. Make a mental note that you can destroy this wall closer guy. This will be useful later. The intro bosses are always super easy and can be defeated pretty quickly. After defeating the intro stage, I couldn't wait to see what kind of new crazy animatronic warriors I'll be fighting this time when all of a sudden... What? Where are the Mavericks? Who are these three bastards in silhouette? What's this all about? I was dying to know. And then... The big reveal! Oh yeah, baby, this is what I'm talking about. Eight brand spanking new Mavericks to take down, areas to explore, and power-ups to be had. Mega Man X at its finest. Now, to me, every Mega Man game has one or two bitch bots, as I like to call. Or robots that are noticeably easier to defeat than the rest. And in X2, for my money, it's Wire Sponge and Bubble Crab. So I'm gonna kick Wire Sponge's ass first. I get up to Wire Sponge and start blasting away. He's obviously the Maverick that you're probably supposed to start off with when, all of a sudden, he gets all red and pissed off a little way through mid-battle. This is a new feature in Mega Man X2 that adds a little bit more excitement and unpredictability to boss battles. The boss adds a new attack or changes up attacks, breaking the cycle that usually always happens in Mega Man games where you figure out the boss's pattern and the challenge level goes way down. And that's the balance. Some of the later Mega Man X games were just too damn hard and made me say, fuck it, fuck it, I give up, I give up. However, you don't want a Mega Man game that you can blow through in under an hour either. There has to be a balance. Now, as I was saying, with boss battles, even with the new mid-fight change-up, if you have the weapon that is the boss's weakness, you can still get them in a pattern, which I kind of consider cheesy and unchallenging, so I try to avoid doing that. Now, with that being said, some Mavericks can be quite tedious to defeat if you do not have the weapon that is their weakness, like Crystal Snail, for example. Oh, come on, come on, why so slow? What a pain in the ass! The only real challenge of this boss is having to deal with Nintendo's patented slow everything the fuck down mechanism when there's a lot of crazy shit going down on screen. Overall though, the Mavericks in this game are very well designed and diverse. You got your magma centipedes. You got your overdrive ostriches. You got the wheel gators and his pool of blood or oil. I'm not sure. Wasn't this supposed to be a kid's game? God, I love the 90s. This was also before Capcom started running out of ideas for robotic animals to use in their games. You know, like Duff McWhalen and Metal Shark Player. I mean, what the hell's that all about? Oh, uh, uh, kind of like Boomer Kuanger and Wire Sponge. Like, what the fuck are those, man? What the fuck is a Kuanger? Yeah, okay, fine, you have a point. So what? After defeating a few Mavericks, those silhouette fuckers from the beginning make an appearance again. And they proclaim that they must intervene, and then they taunt you by saying, We have Zero's parts, and you can come get them if you can defeat us, bitch! Bitch! 
I'm paraphrasing, of course. Now, these X-Hunters, as they like to be called, disperse themselves randomly throughout the rest of the remaining Maverick levels in the game. And you gotta find them fuckers. They don't just show you where they are. And sometimes finding them can be tricky. Like this part in Flame Stag stage. Oh, look up there. Some more of those breakable rocks. Oh shit, there's another one of them beetle things. Smash this wall, you beetle bitch. What's this? No way. I am already at the boss? Wrong. It's one of those X-Hunter silhouette fuckers. And this one's name is Surges, Stur Sturges, Surgeon, Sergeys, whatever. Well, most of these X-Hunters have a pretty predictable pattern. But with this guy, yet again, you get that classic Nintendo slowdown, big time. And that's one of the main things that makes this guy so frustrating to battle. But if you're a Mega Man X vet, you should still be able to take him down pretty easily. Once defeated, do you leave the level? Nope. Still got a soldier on and fight the main boss. The Japanese are a very diligent people, and their games are no exception. After defeating Agile and Violin, whatever, you collect all of Zero's parts. Now, think of these battles like going to college. You do a bunch of hard work now that will make life easier later on. In the Sigma stages. You know, j just like college. Now, on to the armor upgrades. Mega Man X would not be complete without bitchin' armor upgrades to enhance your moves. The first upgrade I figured out as a kid was in the Overdrive Ostrich level when you go to nearly the end of the level and dash jump into the little cove with the purplish bricks and access the mid-air dash maneuver. A very useful move indeed. Now, the second upgrade I found was in the Wheel Gator stage. On a whim, God, wasn't it so gratifying to explore some tiny little out of the way area and find one of these? To this day, finding an armor upgrade capsule is still one of the most satisfying things in any game I've played. Next, in Morph Moth stage, Mor Morph Moth, I swear, do they go out of their way to make these names hard for people to say, or am I just dumb? Well, I'm going with the latter. Well, anyway, you can find the chest upgrade, which I'm still stoked about finding a capsule, but this, as with most chest upgrades in the Mega Man games, is pretty much useless. It gives you some kind of Nova Blast attack, which does very little damage to most anything, but whatever. It can be used as a one-hit death maneuver for some of the mini-bosses, I suppose. Finally, in Crystal Snail stage, you get the head armor upgrade, which is a very useful radar ability that seeks out spots in the game where rare items are located. This upgrade is pretty essential if you're new to this game and are having trouble locating all the E-Tanks and Life Extenders. I'm convinced that I would have never found everything in this game as a kid if not for this helmet upgrade. Now just like the original Mega Man X, there are hidden Life Extenders everywhere. And as I said earlier, I'm sure as a kid the helmet upgrade helped me find some of these, but I was an obsessive compulsive when it came to games that I loved. I know for a fact I found most of these bonus items just painstakingly searching for rare spots and crevices. Mmm, crevices. Mega Man X taught me that sometimes a secret can be found right off the bat with this life extender. Other times you have to use powers and power-ups you've already acquired in the game to go back and get other life extenders. For my money, this was one of those life extenders that you had to have the helmet upgrade to find. How are you supposed to know to use Crystal Snail's power to freeze the poor little robot guy and jump on top of him and climb to the top? I liked it when they did this though. The life extender in Crystal Snail's level was a bitch to get until my dumbass finally figured out that by tapping the B button the robot could actually hover much longer in the air than just holding it down once. And then you had the obligatory freebies, like in any Mega Man game. The Life Extender and Flame Stag stage is a good example. Oh man, what a challenge. The level design of Mega Man X2 continued to be amazing and improved on the designs of the first game. I loved how you could affect the weather in Wire Sponge's level by blasting certain weapons at those orbs. I totally dug that beetle and flame stag stage that you could jump onto and it lifted you up to an E-Tank. It was always super fun and challenging trying to avoid all the yellow spotlights in Magma Centipede's level. 
or Overdrive Ostriches stage, how I could never quite get that damn speed bike inside the building to get the life extender. I always loved following that robotic fish back to his final docking area in Bubble Crab stage, and how he just kind of creepily sat there, defenseless, as I exacted my revenge on his punk ass. And as you might have guessed, after defeating all the Mavericks, you get to fight Sigma. But not before fighting some of his crony bitches first. Now you're at the first Sigma stage. These levels tend to utilize your newly learned abilities and skills to their fullest extent. So you fight your way through until you get to these bastards. Remember these guys? Well, let's just say you'll make life a lot easier on yourself by destroying them before they make their ascent to the top to close the walls in on you. It's best to use Overdrive Ostrich's power-up to blast upwards and take out those wall-closing bastards. You fight Violin again, but this time he's got moving platforms. He definitely got the short end of the stick when it came to the Maverick Hunter upgrades for the Sigma stages. I actually think the platforms make him easier than before because you have more places to hide from his spiky ball attack. Then you go on to battle Sergei's, but now he's in some goofy tank looking thing that shoots out glowing footballs at you. Then when you blow up the front part, he changes up his attack and you have less platforms to move around on. I was just dicking around with him at this point, but uh, he's pretty easy to defeat. Before I move on to Agile, let's talk just for a second about the sh oh, you can In the third Sigma stage, after you've collected all E-Tanks and Life Extenders, you blast a bat at a certain spot with Crystal Snail's weapon. You can climb on top of that ladder on the ceiling. You get by more bats. Do this dashy dash thing. But before going down that hole, make sure your life meter is at 100%. Now just slide down the left hand side, baby, and BAM! Another motherfucking capsule in a Sigma stage. How cool is that? You still have more shit to find even after defeating all Mavericks. Nice move, Capcom. Now to execute this attack, you literally do it the same way you would do in Street Fighter, which is where this attack comes from, by the way. Duh. And it's mainly meant to be just like a little Easter egg in the game. It's not really very practical for the simple fact that as soon as you take any damage whatsoever, you can no longer perform the attack. Oh, but boy is it fun shurukening things. Like that fish. Oop. Bye-bye, upgraded agile bitch. Flame stag, Shuriken centipede. Oh, lassie, we've seen this stage before. That can only mean one thing. Sigma can't be far. Now see, this was that college shit I was telling you about earlier. You see that black zero, uh, um, that African-American zero? You would have had to have fought that motherfucker had you not had the due diligence to beat them punk-ass X-Hunters earlier on. And see, Blazam! The Red Zero, um, the, the Native American Zero, he done came in and destroyed his bitch ass. So now all you gotta do is fight Sigma. And no worries, my fellow gamer, this is Nintendo Sigma, not Sony PlayStation Sigma, so he'll be a lot easier than the Sigmas of the later series. Unless you want it hard. If you like it hard, then you better just move on from this battle. His first form is Wolverine. He jumps all around, disappearing, reappearing, shooting pink electric cotton balls at you. Whatever, pretty easy. Sigma's second form utilizes that fancy new CX4 chip that Capcom included in all the Mega Man X2 cartridges that allowed them to render those 3D wireframes. Sigma is now in virus form and very, very, very easy. He even gives you robots you can blow up for extra life. Pretty simple for a last boss. After defeating Sigma, he says, Each defeat only makes me stronger. Oh, buddy, if only we had known how true that statement was going to be in the future. Capcom milked the Mega Man X series for all it was worth in the coming years. After the series moved to PlayStation, it lost a lot of heart and mystique in my opinion. Maybe it was because I had grown up by then. But the first three Mega Man X games for Super Nintendo epitomized platform gaming excellence for me personally. We've come a long way with video games since those days, and it's probably foolish for me to hold out hope for a Super Nintendo style Mega Man X game to ever be made again. But who knows, maybe in a few more years Mega Man X will become so vintage and hip 
that Capcom will make a new, um, old Mega Man X game, just like they did with the classic Mega Man games like Mega Man 9 and Mega Man 10. Until then, I can only dream. Alright, that was the video. Hope you found it informative and entertaining. I hope you laughed. I hope you cried. I hope you questioned the whole meaning of it all. If you want to subscribe to my channel, you should be able to uh, do it by clicking one of these buttons here. Um, I don't know how to work video editing technology that well right now, so I may not even have a fancy button, but, but when I can get one, I'm going to. I'll have like lightning coming out of it and um, like fire and all kinds of like really nice looking graphics, but uh, right now I'm a very simple man, but by the time this video is uploaded, I'll probably have all that shit because I have a lot of free time on my hands, hence why I'm reviewing Super Nintendo video games. Alright guys, my name is Josh, I hope you had fun, I love you.